this following animation, we'll be talking about the somatic cell hybridization or SCH technique. This is the most widely used approach developed in 1950s involves fusion of cells from different species. Here it is depicted as two species of human being as well as mouse and to, and, and to make the interspecific somatic cell hybrid. Then those hybrids are cultured and then from the, those culture we can tell uh, after loading the gel that which whether the two DNA are belonging to a same chromosome or not. So let's begin. So suppose this is the AGPRT plus. AGPRT is a molecule uh, that must be present inside the cell. This is a human cell which is AGPRT plus. It is having its own DNA and the mouse cell having AGPRT minus. It is having its own DNA. Now then we want these two cells to be fused and what it will form is a giant hybridoma or large cell with two different DNA materials. Now those two materials will um, move to each other and after being uh, adjusted or mixed with each other we put those hybridoma cells onto a medium. This is a kind of selective medium and it is termed as hypoxanthine aminopterin thymidine media or HAT media. Now this is a kind of selective media which selects the growth of only hybridomas but will not select the growth of only human or only mouse cells. So only those cells containing both the genomes will survive in this medium. After the survival, what we get? Usually the human chromosome or human DNA start to go away and lost after a certain time. And most of the time it remains with only the mouse DNA. Then we take this cell, we isolate this DNA and we load the gel with this DNA. After loading the gel with this DNA, we run the gel and what we get is a different band pattern. By looking at this band pattern, what we can tell is uh, we, we repeat this experiment several different times. Here it is denoted by uh, four different times A, B, C and D and in, in fifth case five uh, not four five different times a b c d and e and in all this case what we can see is that the band pattern of the lane b is exactly similar to the band pattern of uh, the lane e so it, it can tell us that this those two individual gene sequence that is found in b as well as e are present in same chromosome now actually for the simplicity here I have so shown only five different lanes or five different time experiments but actually these experiments are done for longer period of time for many different region of experiment and then what we get we get this kind of answer result where we get maximum number of similarity between many different re results and by looking at them we can tell that whether they are related or not whether those different genes are present in the same chromosome or not.